this is karma for Matt Gates, who is a complete and utter liar. Because, of course, a couple of days ago he went on Tucker Carlson tonight on Fox News. As you can see from this video here, it's titled Matt, Matt Gates Responds to Sex Trafficking Allegations on Tucker Carlson Tonight. And for the past eight minutes, he completely pretended that he never sex trafficked a 17 year old girl that he that he did meet when he was like probably in his 20s so this video right here that I'm gonna show you seems a lot suspicious to me than and I expected because if he denies the claims without acknowledging what he did was wrong then clearly clearly he's in hot water for uh you know doing a bunch of shitty things so without further ado i guess i am going to show you the interview which is eight minutes long just a couple of hours ago, late this afternoon, the New York Times ran a story saying that Florida Congressman Matt Gates is under federal investigation for playing some role in sex trafficking, potentially having a relationship with a 17-year-old girl. There are very few details in major news outlets tonight about this story. We have no background on it all and not even any very informed questions. Instead, we've invited Congressman Gates on the show to respond to these stories and give us his view of them. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, so this is obviously a serious allegation. Tell us what the truth is from your perspective. It is a horrible allegation, and it is a lie. The New York Times is running a story that I have traveled with a 17-year-old woman, and that is verifiably false. People can look at my travel records and see that that is not the case. What is happening is an extortion of me and my family involving a former Department of Justice official. On March 16th, my father got a text message demanding a meeting wherein a person demanded $25 million in exchange for making horrible sex trafficking allegations against me go away. Our family was so troubled by that, we went to the local FBI. And the FBI and the Department of Justice were so concerned about this attempted extortion of a member of Congress that they asked my dad to wear a wire, which he did with the former Department of Justice official. Tonight, I am demanding that the Department of Justice and the FBI release the audio recordings that were made under their supervision and at their direction, which will prove my innocence and that will show that these allegations are true. They're merely intended to try to bleed my family out of money. And this former Department of Justice official tomorrow was supposed to be contacted by my father so that specific instructions could be given regarding the wiring of $4.5 million as a down payment on this bribe. I don't think it's a coincidence that tonight, somehow, the New York Times is leaking this information, smearing me and ruining the investigation that would likely result in a, one of the former colleagues of the current DOJ being brought to justice for trying to extort me and my family. So a, a couple of obvious questions that come to mind, and again, just to restate, this just happened, don't have any other information beyond what we've already said and you have said. Um, who, first of all, who is this Department of Justice former employee who's trying to extort the money from you, you say? His name is David McGee. He was a top official in the leadership in the Northern District of Florida as a prosecutor. He currently works at the Beggs and Lane Law Firm. As a matter of fact, one of the recordings that was made at the FBI and Department of Justice request occurred at that law firm. And the money that was supposed to be paid today that would have shown even more evidence of David McGee's work in this extortion scheme, but that was foiled by the New York Times story. And I believe that's why this... Uh, this horrible information and these terrible allegations have yeah 
I'm sure it was a smear campaign, but remember the time when you mocked that coronavirus? I mean, you're blaming the Washington Post or the New York Times, most likely, or the New York Post for making a story that <laughs> could not be a made up imagination. He tweets out that the allegations, the allegations against me are false. The extortion of my family by foreign DOJ official is real. DOJ has the tapes. Please release them. And if they release them, it will show that you still did something to a 17-year-old. And there's already people creating the hashtag after you to get you off the GOP because you're a disgrace and you always have been a disgrace no matter how you tweet out support from other outlets like the red state for defending you or tweeting out a story from foxnews.com you still probably did these things and if you can't actually admit to it because what you did was wrong, well, you're gonna be you're gonna be kicked off from the GOP anyway. I mean, I don't care how much support you're gonna tweet out for people who are going to defend you. You are not getting out of this one easy, that gates. You're not getting this. You're not getting out of this one, really. So you're, and, and I'll get the investigation in a sec, but, but you're saying that David McGee was motivated by greed. He was trying to extort money from your family. That's his motivation, you're saying. Uh, I know that there was a demand for money in exchange for a commitment that he could make this investigation go away along with his co-conspirators. They even claim to have specific connections inside the Biden White House. Now, I don't know if that's true. They were promising that Joe Biden would pardon me. Obviously, I don't need a pardon. I'm not seeking a pardon. I've not done anything improper or wrong. But what I am troubled by uh, is the real motivation for all of this. You know, just tonight, Ted Lieu, a Democrat, is calling on me to be removed from the House Judiciary Committee. And I believe we are in an era of our politics now, Tucker, where people are smeared to try to take them out of the conversation. I'm not the only person on screen right now who's been falsely accused of a terrible... Smeared, even though you did it? ...terrible sex act. You were accused of something that you did not do, and so you know what this feels like. You know the pain it can bring to your family, and you know how it just puts people on defense when you're accused of something so salacious and awful. But it did not happen. It is not true. And the fact that it is the basis of this attempt to extort my family tells a lot. And if the FBI and Department of Justice will release the tapes that they are in possession of, the American people will see what is really going on. Not sure if Tucker Carlson actually did any of these things, but if he did, then that's disgraceful. He should be off Fox News Channel immediately. They, you just referred to a, a mentally ill viewer who accused me of a sex crime 20 years ago. Um, and it, of course, it was, it was not true. I never met the person. Um, but but I, I do agree with you that being accused falsely is one of the worst things that can happen. And you do see it a lot. Let's go back to the investigation. You you say that it was uh, that it was or is underway. There was an investigation. What is the basis of that investigation? What is the allegation? Is that really not very clear from these news stories? Yeah, again, I only know what I've read in the New York Times. Uh, I can say that actually you and I went to dinner uh, about two years ago. Your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine. You'll remember her. And she was actually threatened by the FBI, told that if she wouldn't cop to the fact that somehow I was involved in some pay for play scheme, uh, that she could face trouble. And so uh, I do believe that there are people at the Department of Justice who are trying to smear me, uh, you know, providing for flights uh, and hotel rooms for people that you're dating who are of legal age is not a crime. Uh, and I'm just troubled that the lack of any sort of legitimate uh, investigation into me would then permute, would then convert into this extortion attempt. Uh, 
yeah, this is where this 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 is part where this interview gets a little bit sketchy already. From the website, the Daily Beast, it says Matt Gates accused a Florida lawyer of a twenty-five million dollar extortion scheme to make sex trafficking allegations disappear. Republicans on and off Capitol Hill on Wednesday largely kept their mouths shut. Gates, the Trump-loving Fox News grinning 38-year-old Republican, has a less than sterling reputation among his congressional colleagues. More than half a dozen loyal makers have spoken to these reporters about his love of alcohol and illegal drugs, as well as his publicity for younger women. It's well known among Republican lawmakers that Gates was dating a college student, one over the age of consent in 2018. She came to Washington as an intern. In response to these allegations and a question about whether he had ever had a sexual relationship with a 17 year old while in Congress, Gates told Daily Beast late Wednesday night. The last time I had a sexual relationship with a 17 year old, I was 17, as for the hill. I know I had many enemies and a few friends. My support generally lies outside of Washington. I wouldn't have it any other way. As for his few friends in Washington, the Daily Beast found that to be true. One former GP staff said Wednesday, that their office had an informal rule to not allow their number to appear next to Gates during TV hits, fearful of the inevitable scandal that would come out one day. On Tuesday, it might finally have dropped. According to New York Times, Gates is under investigation by the Justice Department for potentially having a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old girl. Uh, Gates has denied the existence of a 17-year-old lover. He's been suspended about the suggestion that he's dated women much younger than him while in Congress. And he's openly admitted that he said that he's paid for flights and hotels to, for women to visit him. I've been, you know, Jammers as a partner, Gates says Tuesday. Now Gates m- may be find- finding generosity in su- shortest supply am- among his colleagues. Only two House Republicans jumped to his defense on Wednesday. Jim Jordan, who helped him. himself, has been accused of turning into blind eye, blind eye to sexual assault and. Major Taylor Green has repeatedly boosted the QAnon conspiracy theory accusing Democrats of abusing children. While Green compared Gates' allegations to witch hunt and the conspiracy theories and lies like Trump slash Russian collusion, Jordan was more new. I believe Matt Gates, he said in a statement to CNN. QPAs noted to the Daily Beast that Jordan has been one of Gates' closest allies in Congress, and the most he would offer was the tepid statement and his support for Gates staying on, on the Judiciary Committee. More importantly, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy wasn't exactly jumping into Gates' corner. McCarthy said on Fox News that he wanted to wait for the fact before manning out any punishment, like removing gates from committees. But the GP leader also offered that if it comes out to be true, yes, we would remove him. Those are serious. I, I, I don't remember the, the woman you're speaking of over the context at all, honestly. But I I would like to know who... So they're saying there is a 17-year-old girl who uh, you had a relationship with. Is that true? And who are they? Who is this girl? What are they talking I, about? Uh, New York Times? The person doesn't exist. I have not had a relationship with a 17-year-old. That is totally false. The allegation, as I read it in the New York Times, is that I've traveled with some 17-year-old in some relationship. That is false, and records will bear that out to be false. 
how, how long has this investigation been going on? Do you know? I, I don't know. When were you first informed of it? Uh, you know, again, I, I, I really saw this as a deeply troubling challenge for my family on March 16th when people were, you know, talking about a, a minor and that there were pictures of me with child prostitutes. Uh, that's obviously false. There will be no such pictures because no such thing happened. Um, but really on March 16th was when this got going from the extortion standpoint. No such thing happened? Or are you just saying that to cover up your lies? So what what happens next? I mean, you, you can say there is this investigation, I guess a criminal investigation. I'm not quite sure what the sex trafficking part comes in. I don't, again, for the fifth time, I don't really understand the story very well. But what, where does it go from here? I mean, you're, you've made an allegation against someone by name on the air and accused him of trying to extort millions of dollars from your family. What, what happens tomorrow? Well, what was supposed to happen uh, was the transfer of this money that would have implicated the former colleague of these current DOJ officials. But that's obviously not going to happen tomorrow because the New York Times story was leaked in order to quell that investigative effort. So here's what needs to happen next. The FBI and the Department of Justice must release the tapes that are in their possession that were done at their direction. Those tapes will show that I am innocent and that the whole concept of sex charges against me was really just a way to try to bleed my family out of money and probably smear my name because I am a well-known, outspoken conservative. And I guess that's out of style in a lot of parts of the country right now. Matt Gates, the Florida Republican, being investigated by the Justice Department over sex trafficking allegations made a name for himself when he arrived on Capitol Hill as a conservative vibrant on TV and staunch defender of then President Donald Trump. Behind the scenes, Gates gained a reputation in Congress over his relationships with women and bragging about his sexual escapades to his colleagues, multiple sources told CNN. Gates allegedly showed off two of our longest mayors' photos and videos of nude women he said he had slept with, the sources told CNN, including while on the House floor. The sources, including two people indirectly shown in the materials, said Gates displayed the images of women on his phone and talked about having sex with them. One of the videos showed a naked woman of a hula hoop, according to one source. It was a point of of pride, one of the sources said, of Gates. So guys, it is currently the next day as I am recording this Saturday, April 3rd, 2021, and it's clear to me that Donald Trump for the past year has taught Matt Gates well to lie. And that is because he re realizes that he is in trouble. Matt Gates realizes he's in trouble. Why? Well, there are more stories coming out that he did do it. So, all right, so now I'm on another The Daily Beast story which is titled, These text messages pointed to, pointed to the feds to Matt Gates," And I've immediately scrolled down to show you guys this. The image attained by the Daily Beast shows that Greenberg allegedly responded. Yes, I was showing Congress Gates what our operation looked like. Did I leave something on? And as you can see, there is the phone right there, which exactly says the same thing I just read up here. And this is him responding, I think, which, which of course happens to be true. The Daily Beast obtained images of additional text messages that purports to show Greenberg helping Gates get duplicate IDs outside of proper channels on Sunday afternoon, on September 2nd, 2018. Greenberg directly asked an employee to quickly create a new card that complies with the heightened security standards of quote-unquote real ID 
process that would normally require providing additional documentation according to the images. And then there's another one down here, which is which says, Amy, is there any way to assist one of our congressmen in getting an emergency replacement ID or DL by 2C, 2 p.m.? This was lost yesterday and he's got a flight on Tuesday. Doesn't have any other form of ID currently on him. Sorry to bother you on Sunday, Greenberg wrote. Greenberg then confirmed that the favor was for Matthew Lewis Gates II, born May 7, 1982. Hmm. 1982. Yep. Google. Google gave me the right answer. He was born in 1982, May 7th, 1982. So this might be. Wow. My dear Anna, this is your favorite tax collector. I'm up in Panhandle with your favorite U.S. Congressman, Mr. Gates. Hi, Anna. And uh, we were just chatting about you and talking about your lovely qualities. You're, we think you're the future of the Democratic Party in Florida. Well, see, I know you're the future of it, so there's no thinking involved. Anyway, uh, if you get this and you feel like chatting, give me a shout back. Hope you're well. Hope you had a nice fourth. Later. They were also together in the Florida Panhandle region on July 5th, 2019, when they called a state legislator on a B.S. May and left her a peculiar voicemail that has been obtained by the Daily Beast, which we just heard. So I think Matt Gates is primarily in big, big trouble. Consider this. In the next 24 hours, Gates will have no choice but to resign. I mean, his career is done for. This is karma. This is what he gets for mocking the people of the United States who were afraid of getting COVID-19 last year by wearing this weirdly stink-like bomb mask on his face. On Thursday, Eskimi told the Daily Beast that she kept Greenberg at arm's length for years. Their interaction started when she called him out over Islamophobic comments and then helped him connect with the Muslim community to recover from that. As commanding, he said she constantly entertained weird contacts from Greenberg and Gates that made her uncomfortable. We're not friends, we never hung out, we didn't talk ever, really. I just play nice. For so many women, you're either very blunt and be called a bitch, or you can try to play nice and vivid and deflate, she said. So yeah, Gates is probably done. I'll be doing more of these if I get this video out there past. By the time you see this, it's already out. 